As we get deeper into free agency, should the Rams go big name hunting all over again? You are Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to, to click that subscribe button. You know how to do it, that little check mark, the little bookmark, whatever you want to do. Make sure you click that thing on your podcast feed. And, of course, our Locked on Rams YouTube channel as well is also free and available right there. Subscribe to it. So make it a good part of uh, your day every day. My name is Travis Rogers. I am your Locked on Rams host. I also host the Rams pregame show, halftime show, and postgame show on their flagship station, ESPN LA 710. Been doing that since the Rams came back to LA in 2016. Okay, so we have a lot to get to today on today's show. The NFL is considering some new overtime rules. We talked about some USFL overtime rules that I thought were kind of interesting, but these are probably much more likely to be implemented. We'll talk about how they may or may not benefit the Rams coming up in just a little bit. The schedule has been out for a while. I want to talk about maybe not the, the dates exactly, but the opponents that the Rams are going to play in the 2022 season. We'll get into the three biggest games that I think they have coming up on that schedule uh, a little bit later on, but let's start right here. What have the Rams done incredibly well um, since Sean McVay has been the coach here, since Sean McVay and Les Snead have been a partnership when it comes to selecting the players for the Rams, they go get big name guys, right? I mean, the, the list, this is, this is a partial list. This is, they got Von Miller last year. They got Odell Beckham Jr. A few years ago, they go out and get Jalen Ramsey. Last season, uh, during the offseason, I should say, they go out and get Matthew Stafford. These are just huge names across the NFL that the Rams have gone out of their way to make sure that they're at the front of the list. And, and, the, and the, this is just a partial list. They've gone and gotten Sammy Watkins and Brandon Cooks and Akeem Tlaib and Marcus Peters. I mean, they have been incredibly, and Dominic and Sue, I could, I could go on and on about all the big names that they've gone to get. And really, most of them have been between okay and really good. There's been very few guys that they've gone out, especially big name guys that they've gone out and tried to pick up that haven't worked out for them. So here we are a couple of weeks into free agency. The Rams have been um, active to a degree. Allen Robinson, obviously a very big pickup. Uh, a lot of people really like that move, myself included. Um, that's a big part of it. But they still are. There are some still names on, on the free agent market, I should say. There's some pretty big names that are available. Bobby Wagner, we've talked about. The Rams and, and Bobby Wagner have reportedly met. There was mutual interest on both sides. Still no deal there. But obviously an opportunity for them to add another very big name guy, another potential Hall of Famer in Bobby Wagner. But here's the big name that I think the Rams could really use, and it's a perfect fit to Debbie and Clowney, right? Clowney was the number one pick in the draft not that long ago. Cl Clowney feels like one of those guys that's been around for a really long time. Do you know how old Jadevian Clowney is? He's 29, okay? And considering the position that he plays, that is not an old football player. That's somebody that is probably right in the middle of their prime. Now, you could argue that Clowney's career to this point has been a mixed bag. Certainly hasn't been a bust, but it hasn't been what you might expect when you have the number one overall pick, right? If you have the number one overall pick and you're that guy, you should be a multiple-time pro bowler, an all-pro, maybe a borderline Hall of Famer, all of these things if you're the number one overall pick. Of course, we know that's not always how it works out. That being said, he's also been a pretty good football player. He's been in some circumstances that maybe have not been ideal. The Houston Texans, I think that speaks for itself. That's a team that has not been historically particularly well-run. You look at a team like the Seattle Seahawks, okay, how, did, how well did he fit there? You've got the Cleveland Browns, okay? There's a couple of different things in Cleveland that just really don't make any sense. Um, let's talk about what he might be able to do with the Rams. Think about what he does. He plays end, okay? He's a guy that can get to the quarterback. Maybe not some unbelievably gaudy sack numbers along the way, but he does pretty good work. He sets the edge, which means that ball's got to come back into the middle, which means that's where 99 is. Really good news for the Rams. He would do something that would be opposite of Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd on one side, Clowney on the other, Aaron Donald, wherever he wants to go. Starting to see that picture, right? You're starting to see how all of these pieces fit together for not just Aaron Donald, not just for Leonard Floyd, but Jadamian Clowney. All of a sudden, everybody's got a role in this thing, and all these pieces start to fit together awfully well. 
That's all very important too. But here's the part that is most exciting to me if, in fact, they can find a way to get something done with Clowney. Think about a guy like Dante Fowler. Think about a guy like Leonard Floyd. Dante Fowler, a very highly picked guy in Jacksonville a few years ago, really never worked out for him there. He comes to L.A., he plays opposite Aaron Donald, and what happens? He goes off. He becomes one of the most effective defensive players that the Rams have during that period of time. He plays very high-level football, so high-level, in fact, that the Atlanta Falcons take a chance on him and say, hey, look, maybe he's rediscovered his groove. He goes to Atlanta. How much have we talked about Dante Fowler in Atlanta? Not that much, right? So there's a good example of a guy that's got a lot of talent to get picked that high in the draft that needs to be in the right situation. And by the way, the right situation is any situation that involves you being on the same side of the ball with Aaron Donald, right? That we've seen a lot of guys do that. Think about Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd in Chicago was looked at as this just didn't work out. We didn't pick the right guy. He comes to L.A. Leonard Floyd has become an incredibly effective NFL player. Again, the right situation, the right place opposite Aaron Donald, an opportunity for Aaron Donald to get his double team, sometimes his triple teams, and you're going to get an opportunity to do what you do frequently. You're going to get an opportunity to do what you do frequently against single-man coverage, right, against one-on-one blocking. Leonard Floyd is taking advantage of that. Tell me that you don't think that Jadevian Clowney could slide into a similar role like this and have similar success the way that Fowler did, the way that Leonard Floyd continues to. Obviously not quite the player that uh, a guy like Von Miller is, but so many of these guys. And and I think this is important to say because Vaughn Miller has achieved so much in his own career. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. He's a Super Bowl MVP. We don't don't need to run down Vaughn Miller's credentials. He's that good of a player. But we talk so much about how much Vaughn Miller helped Aaron Donald. Can we just flip that for a second? How much did Aaron Donald help Vaughn Miller? Aaron Donald is still the red dot guy. He's still the guy when the other offensive coordinators are getting ready to play the Rams. Okay, where's we're going to start with number 99, and then we'll go from there. That's still going to be the case, whether it's Vaughn Miller over there, whether it's Leonard Floyd, whether it's Jademi Clowney, wh- whoever might be on the opposite side. Aaron Donald is still the guy that's providing most of the attention, which means everyone else is getting slightly to significantly less. Jadevian Clowney with slightly less attention paid to him. Have the Rams really whiffed on a guy that has come in with an opportunity to play opposite Aaron Donald that hasn't at least been pretty darn good, if not thrived? Even Sue, right? Even Sue was a guy that, and again, he played a position similar to Aaron Donald, so there may be a little bit of overlap there. But while maybe he didn't have a monster season, he certainly had a pretty good season. And this is what I think the Rams are looking for, an opportunity to find a player that's got a great deal of talent that maybe is a little bit undervalued at this point, that might be willing to go to a team that's going to provide him the opportunity to win a bunch of games, maybe go to the playoffs, maybe even go win a Super Bowl. Sounds like a pretty good match. Bobby Wagner, probably slightly more important to what they're doing right now in my estimation, but an opportunity to go get Jadevian Clowney, I think would be very, very interesting for the Rams moving forward. Okay, so we know who the Rams opponents are going to be next year. Uh, I want to talk about the three games looking forward to that I think are going to be kind of benchmark games, depending exactly on where they fall on the schedule. We still don't know what that is yet, but the three games to look forward to, but the three games to look forward to in the 2022 season. Okay. But first we want to talk about our guys at Built Bar, right? How about this? I told you about what I did last week, right? Hey, we had some people over. We had a couple of parties along the way. We had some food. It was a great time, but maybe not the best food choices in the world. Can't tell you how nice it was to get back on track with Built Bar, right? That just to know, okay, I made a couple of bad decisions along the way. I can get back into this pretty easily with some very good decisions like Built Bar, and I don't have to sacrifice taste. I'm going to make sure that I still get to eat something I want to eat, but it's a great choice. I could read you the numbers, like 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, all that stuff. Doesn't matter, right? What you need to know is that is the good stuff compared to everything else that's out there, your candy bars in particular. You need something on the go, put them in your bag, put them in your desk, put them in your car. You're ready to go. They all taste great. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and the new white chocolate cookies and cream. How are you going to go wrong with that, right? Built Bar, it's always about the taste. They make them taste great first, and then they take care of all the good stuff. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off of your order one more time, promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Start making some good choices. Okay, so the Rams schedule that uh, is coming up in the 2022 season, We obviously we know they're going to play their division schedule. They're going to play the NFC South. They're going to play the AFC West. And they got some, you know, those, those non 
divisional opponents, non-other conference opponents that you play based on your record, and we know who those are as well. You're going to see the Dallas Cowboys. You're going to see the Green Bay Packers. You're going to see the Buffalo Bills. These are the teams that the Rams are going to play uh, in those one-off games along the way. I want to talk about what I think at this point, and here we are, you know, late in March. We're still a ways away. The rosters aren't entirely finalized. We haven't done the draft, anything like that, but kind of some benchmark games to look forward to coming up in this 2022 season. Let's start with this one. I think there are three games that you can really kind of point to at this point. And I, I'm going to I'm gonna put all the division games aside because we know that the six games that they're going to play against Arizona, Seattle, and San Francisco are always hard-fought games, division games. Those are the most important ones of your season, theoretically. But the Rams are the class of that division. So how do you measure up against the other teams around the league uh, that may be the class of theirs? So let's start right here. Let's start with Green Bay. The Rams have not beat Green Bay since way back in the Coliseum. Right. Remember that game? I think it was David Montgomery returns a kick for the uh, Green Bay Packers late in the game. He brings it out of the end zone. Everybody in the place is like, wait, what is he doing late? Instead, comes out, ball comes out. They fumble. Aaron Rodgers never gets a chance to get his ball, his hands on the ball towards the end of the game. Rams win that game. Since then, not a lot of luck against the Green Bay Packers. They got beat by him last year in the regular season. They got beat by them in the postseason the year before that. That, of course, was the Aaron Donald injury game. But look, I, I, as as disappointing as Green Bay may be in the postseason, I don't want to say per periodically, frequently, they're still the Green Bay Packers. They're still the team that coming into every season in the NFC, you're kind of looking at to see where they are because they got that guy. They got number 12. They got Aaron Rodgers. And as long as he's there and as long as he's healthy, they're going to be one of those teams that you have to figure out a way to beat. Uh, I think that the Rams know that. I think that the Rams know that at some point they're going to see them again in the playoffs. At some point, you'd like to have a little bit of reservoir success knowing that you can go win those games. Think about it like this. And I did not put this team in there. Like, they play Tampa again this year. They've played Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers three times. They beat them three times. There's there's nothing that they're going to do against Tampa Bay that's going to say, oh, you know, now we know we're a pretty good team. Now we know that we can beat that. They already know that they can beat them. So that's the reason that Tampa's not on the list. Green Bay is a different animal. Green Bay, while maybe they don't exactly show up every time in the postseason, during the regular season, they're always an incredibly good measuring stick. And I would love to see the Rams get a chance to go up against Green Bay. How do you look? How do you how do you match up against Aaron Rodgers? How do you match up defensively with him? Can you move the ball against their defense? I think that's a very interesting matchup for the Rams. So I think that one is number one at the list. Number two is interesting for a couple of different reasons. Number two are the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are interesting, A, because they're, that could very likely be a Super Bowl opponent, you know, assuming that the Rams take care of their business and Buffalo takes care of theirs. And obviously in March, it's, it's kind of a fool's errand to try to talk about who may wind up in the Super Bowl, which is, which is literally like 10 and a half months away. But the fact of the, month, the matter is, the Rams have the talent to go back again, and Buffalo was just barely, you know, they, they didn't get a chance to touch the ball in overtime. Maybe they beat Kansas City. Maybe they beat Cincinnati in the AFC Championship game, and we're talking about a Super Bowl rematch between Buffalo and the L.A. Rams. That's number one. You get to see Josh Allen. You get to see what your defense can do against a dude like that, and that guy is getting very close to the short list of the scariest guy in football because not only can he throw it like crazy, he can run it. He's not scared. He doesn't panic. All of those things that sometimes quarterbacks will give to you, and a little bit of that give back. Like, as good as Kyler Murray is, there's a little bit of big eye moments with Kyler Murray where you think, okay, he's going to give us one right here, and you can kind of feel it coming, and more often than not, it's true. You're not going to get that with Josh Allen. I think that's a very good measuring stick uh, for the Rams defense to go up against him uh, and potentially kind of, you know, one of those moments like, okay, we're the best half of the – we're the team – that's the best on this half of the draw. They're the team that's best on that half of the draw. How does this whole thing shake out? I think that's really interesting. And then the second part of the Buffalo series, of course, or the Buffalo game, I should say, is Von Miller. They get to go up against Von Miller. You know, they're their former teammate, the guy that uh, decided to go somewhere else, the guy that went to Buffalo, the guy that thinks, you know, it's my job to get these guys over the hump the way I help I get the Rams over the hump. He's looking for his third Super Bowl championship on three different teams. And look, he was a very popular player, even though he was only here for a very short period of time. He had a pretty good impact. I would imagine everybody's kind of thinking, OK, let's see what we can do uh, against our old teammate, Von Miller. So I think he's an important part of, of that matchup as well. And just, you know, to put to put it as simply as possible, the Rams and the Bills are two of the best teams in the NFL and getting a chance to see them play each other. Absolutely fantastic. And then the third game that I'm really looking forward to as well, for very many of the same reasons I just mentioned as, as Buffalo the Kansas City Chiefs, right? The Kansas City Chiefs 
are a team that has Patrick Mahomes. Maybe no more Tyreek Hill. He's over there, but you got Travis Kelsey. Andy Reid's going to be there. They've added uh, Juju Smith and Schuster. They've added all of these players, Marquez Valdez Scantling. They've got a whole bunch of weapons. And I don't think anybody's really all that concerned that the Rams are going to be able to score points. You've got Matthew Stafford. You've got Cooper Cup. You've got Allen Robinson. You've got Tyler Higby. At some point, you may be able to say you've got Odell Beckham Jr. You've got weapons on offense. You're going to be able to move the ball. Sean McVay's teams have moved the ball. They've been able to score. That really isn't the question mark going into a lot of these games. The question is, are you going to be able to stop somebody? Nobody is a better test on can I stop somebody or not than the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes and that offense, they score like crazy. And they're always a great test. I, you know, and anytime you see the Rams in the car or the uh, Chiefs, it's very hard not to think of what it was uh, in that Monday night game a couple of years ago at the Coliseum, 54 to 51, first time in NFL history. Uh, a losing team had 50 or more points. That, of course, was the Chiefs who had 51. Just a wild night there. One of the great Monday night games in history. And anytime you get a chance to see a rematch between those two, I think it's incredibly exciting. And again, just very, very simply, Rams are one of the best teams in the NFC. The Chiefs potentially could be one of the best teams in the AFC. Four consecutive AFC championships, a couple of Super Bowl appearances along the way. They're not unlike the Rams. The, you know, the Rams in the last four or five years, a couple of Super Bowl appearances, one Super Bowl win. The Chiefs, a couple of Super Bowl appearances, one Super Bowl win. They've gone a little deeper, a little more regularly into the postseason than the Rams have, but two of the best teams in the NFL over the course of the last five or six years. So that should be another fantastic one along the way as well okay i want to get into some potential nfl uh overtime rule changes coming up for the next seasons if in fact they can get enough votes from the ownership along the way that is coming up next and i think they really help the Rams. so make sure that you hear what that is but before we do that let's talk about athletic greens i can't tell you how excited i was when i found out that athletic greens was going to partner with us here at the locked on podcast network because I'd heard them on other uh, on other podcasts, and I was incredibly intrigued by what the other hosts were talking about and how they made themselves just feel so much better by making Athletic Greens a part of their day. And it's exactly what I was looking for. It's incredibly lifestyle friendly. You start your day with it. It tastes really good, and you get all of your vitamins and minerals. You get this incredible energy boost. Your gut health. Look, not to be too you know out there, but that's an incredibly important part of making sure you feel great. This is what Athletic Greens does. It does all of those things, right? You've got your multivitamin, you got your little energy boost. It tastes really good. Your gut health is really good. Athletic Greens has really changed the way that I feel on a daily basis. And it's not expensive either. It's less than three bucks a day. And if you're thinking about it like this, it's an incredibly good investment in your health. And think about how much money you spend on coffee every day or anything of those little things you buy here and there. Athletic Greens is less than that. And you're going to get all of the unbelievable benefits that come along with doing it as well. Okay, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five feet five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance i promise you're going to feel great because i feel great once i started taking it so right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition especially heading into the flu and cold season you know that goes just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health athleticgreens.com slash nfl network Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Make sure you're following Locked on NFL. Those would be Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It, too, is free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for making Locked on Rams a regular part of your day. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on both your podcast feed and if you haven't done it yet, go to Locked on Rams on YouTube as well and you can subscribe there and we can have this chat. You can post some things in the comments. I like to respond to those a few times a week uh, as well. So always a good way to communicate uh, on the Locked on Rams YouTube channel. So let's talk a little bit about some of the rule changes that have been proposed along the way. Uh, by a couple of the different teams. The first thing that they got to do is they got to find a way to get 24 votes from the 32 team owners to get these things uh, approved and put into play, which is not insignificant, right? That That's a pretty good chunk of the league. It's 75% of the league that you got to get done. So obviously a ways to go, but there are two different proposals that are being knocked around among NFL ownership. Um, there is one that says each team has to have a possession 
before moving to sudden death. This is the one that seems to make the most sense to me because th- think about the way that it used to be. Going back, uh, you know, go back 20 years. It was coin toss, whoever got the coin toss, if you scored the game over. And then it went to, hey, you know what? That doesn't really sound a whole lot uh, fair. If you say you return the kick to the 30-yard line, you only got to move it another 30 yards, you kick a 50-yard field goal, should the game really end there? And they decided, you know what? That's not a good idea. If you drive the field and score a touchdown, the game ends. But if you score a field goal, then the defense gets the ball back. They get a chance to match or beat you, and then we're going to play to the next score. All right, fine. But is a little better, but it still didn't make it obvious. What if the other – and the perfect example is what we saw with Kansas City – and Buffalo last year in the playoffs, where just an unbelievable game, back and forth, incredibly even match. But Kansas City had the benefit of the coin toss. They win, they go down, they score, and Josh Allen, who was just lights out all game long, doesn't even get a chance to touch the ball. In this new scenario, he would. After one possession each, now we go back to sudden death. That's the one that's been floated by the Eagles and the Colts, and it makes a whole bunch of sense. Come back to that in just one second. Let's talk about the second one. The Tennessee Titans have also proposed uh, a tweak that would mean that each team gets a possession unless this the first team scores a touchdown and punches in a two-point con, uh, conversion attempt. It's kind of interesting, right? Because scoring a touchdown under any circumstances is hard. But knowing that you can go for a two-point conversion and end the game is really intriguing because two-point conversions are about a 50-50 shot. We know that, right? But they happen, they, they work just about as often as they don't. And if you don't get it done, now, all of a sudden, you're vulnerable to getting beat by just a touchdown and a PAT. It's a, it's a big risk as opposed to just kicking it and let's play defense and see if we can get a stop and go there. Because even if you kick it and they come back and score a touchdown, well, now all of a sudden, they have to make a decision whether they're going to go for two or where they're going to kick it and whether the game is going to keep going and all these things. It makes for very good decision-making. Um, and I shouldn't say good decision making, interesting decision making, and how the whole thing would shake out. So I'd be kind of interested in seeing that. Both of those are intriguing because both of them it puts more pressure on the offense to be aggressive, which is always a good thing. Or on the first proposal, everybody gets to touch the ball the same amount of times, or at least both teams get to touch the ball in overtime. I think that would be uh, a, a very good idea and, and a welcome change. I understand. The season is long. The games are long. They don't want these games to go any longer than they absolutely have to. They're looking to end them pretty quickly in overtime. But I shouldn't get a distinct advantage just because I got lucky on a coin toss. And I think that both of these would eliminate those. Why I like it for the Rams in particular is I think it gives them an advantage. The the Rams are one of the more dynamic, explosive offensive teams in the league. Sean McVay is really good at creating things and saving things for moments. And so if all of a sudden you have a two-point conversion opportunity to win a game, I think he's going to have a handful of those that you've never seen before. They're going to have a very good chance for success. So I like teams that are offensively oriented in a situation where offense is favored. And I think that that's what this is. The other one is, too, is, the, again, the Rams as an offensively oriented team Let's say they, they they lose the coin toss and somebody drives down on them and scores a touchdown. It's not inconceivable, right? And all of a sudden, you don't even get to touch the ball. At least this way, Matthew Stafford gets a chance to go to Cooper Cup. At least all of a sudden, you can go try to get it to Allen Robinson. You can re- The best part of your team gets to be on the field. It also opens up a, a, a lot of strategic questions, too, about if you do win the cost, maybe you kick now. If you know you're getting the ball back, let's give it to them see what we got to do. Maybe we get a quick stop, field goal, we can win the game. Maybe you don't, you get a touchdown. Now maybe your play calling's a little bit different along the way. I think, you know, we see it in college, the, the team that wins the toss there almost always elects to go on defense first to see what sort of number they have to try to match or beat to win the game. Just adds a whole nother level of decision-making that I think would be very good. And I do think that both of these are offensively oriented solutions, which obviously benefits the Rams a great deal along the way. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Rams. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback, got it right this time, Croc, Eric Crocker, they bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is also free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.